Welcome back, everyone, to the How I Sell podcast. Today, we have someone special joining the podcast, somebody that I've admired from afar, and we're very lucky to have her on the show. It's Ramat Karel. She is currently the VP of Global Sales Enablement at Big Panda. She's had a great career with stops at Rubrik, at AppDynamic, Cisco. Uh, Ramat, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Danny. Yeah, we're very excited to have you here. Before we jump into the five questions that we're asking all of our guests in season two of How I Sell to get that apples to apples comparison from folks that have done it before, uh, we want to know who is Ramat Karel? Uh, great question. Aren't we all still figuring out who we are? Uh, who is Ramat Karel? I'd say first and foremost, uh, I'm a mom. Um, I think that's the biggest defining and most proud title that I've ever held is being a mother. So I'd say I'm a mom. I'm a very caring, empathetic person. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm the leader currently enablement over at Big Panda, somebody who loves life and uh, is excited to share all of my experiences with all of you. Amazing, amazing. Thank you. And I, uh, I like you, wear one of those titles very well. I'm a dad and about to be a dad of two. So uh, I can say um, congrats on the title. It's, it's certainly one of the best. Awesome. Well, jumping in, our first question that we ask all of our guests this season, what is the best advice an early career salesperson or early career person could do for themselves? Yeah, I'd say the best advice that I would give anybody who's considering a career in sales is, do you really know what sales is? And do you know what a career in sales actually looks like? So yeah, you might have a, a good understanding of you're going to go out and, and sell X something, you know, hardware, software, any sort of product. But what does that actually mean? I would really think about that for a little while and say, okay, well, that's a great place to start is as a seller. But what's the progression? You know, when I want to grow, when I think about my career, you think about step one, but you should always be thinking five steps ahead, right? And so the best advice that I could give somebody is to say, one, do I really understand what I'm getting into when I say sales and I want to get into anything to do with sales? And two, you know, what does that mean for your future? What does that mean for your growth? Where do you see yourself five years out in the sales world? That's that's really important, and I think a, a key determinant between folks who maybe start in sales and fizzle out, and start in sales and have a career in sales or a sales adjacent category. What are some of the factors that you've learned along the way that are important as you kind of move up the ranks or start, you know, uh, accelerating your sales career that could lead you to a track to either say yes, this is for me, or no, it's not for me. Yeah, I think there's a number of things, right? Like first figuring out, like, do you actually want to be a true salesperson where you're selling something? Do you want to be somebody who's a part of the pre-sales organization where you're kind of helping with the messaging, the demo and the background? Do you want to be a part of sales when it comes to understanding the competition? Do you want to be sales as in what I do and, and be an enablement and training others on how to sell things and what those skills are that are required? what, you know, first figure that out. Like what part of sales do you really want to be in and what skills do you have, right? Because sometimes we we want to be a magician, for instance, right? You want to be a magician, but you have zero skills, you have zero talent, you have shaky hands. It, it's just not going to happen. It doesn't matter if you want to be something, are you going to be successful at it? But instead, figure out like, hey, instead of being a magician, what am I good at? You know, what, what is it that, what's that one trait that I can take and I can build on? So if you are a great storyteller, you know, if you're great with people, maybe going in and being customer facing sales representative makes sense. Maybe you're a great storyteller, but not great at public speaking, don't like to be in front of people. Well, maybe you could be a great salesperson behind the scenes. Right. So figure out what your superpower is and align your career to that instead of choosing a career that's going to honestly stress you out if your skill set isn't aligned to it. Yep. Yep. That's that's fantastic advice. And a lot of times you have to learn that along the way. So you're not going to know maybe day one. Hey, I'm going to be great at behind the scenes sales work, or I'm going to be great at out front sales work. You kind of have to trial and error it and see what likes and what or what you like and what sticks. Awesome. Uh, question two: 
What's the biggest surprise you experienced early in your career and why? Yeah, this this one, if for people who have heard me speak before, it's not going to come as a huge surprise. Um, I think the biggest surprise that I experienced early on in my career is that, you know, men and women are still treated very, very differently out in the workforce, you know, from when you're being interviewed to when you're being offered the job to when you actually start the job, um, you know, I guess the work world hasn't advanced enough or our thought hasn't advanced enough, or perhaps we're even going backwards just a little bit, Um, but that men and women still aren't treated equally and aren't considered equally for the same position. That that was a huge surprise for me. So I I appreciate you saying that. My mom has always been in charge. She runs a a few hundred people um, private accounting firm in Minnesota. I kind of grew up thinking like this is the norm. And then I get into the workplace and it's it's very clear that it's not. What, What are some things that you think, you know, the workforce can do to improve the stats and improve the odds or leadership positions for for folks uh, or for women coming up through the sales ranks? Yeah, I, I say have, you know, the best thing that we could do is, is have a blindfold on when we're speaking to people and almost have like a, you know, a, a voice modifier, right? To have unbiased views is, is what I'm getting at, right? Where you actually look at people, whether it's on paper or listen to people and actually hire the person that is best suited for the job. And it's not necessarily going to be a woman, you know, it could definitely be a guy too, believe it or not. Um, But I I feel like sometimes we come into conversations a little bit unconsciously biased. um, And I think we need to start setting those biases aside and those stereotypes that we have grown up with, right? Like it's all subliminal. We don't even realize that it's sinking in or that it's affecting the way that we speak to the opposite gender, but it does. So become more self-aware in the types of conversations that you're hiring, you know, having with people as you're hiring them. Um, be more self-aware and, and honestly, put yourself in that, that person's shoes. Like I can tell you from my point of view, I've got three daughters and When I have conversations with people and when I have been onboarded to several of my roles and I've been negotiating salary and I say, no, I want this much more. And I say, listen, if if it was a male person applying for this position, chances are he would be making anywhere from 15 to 25 percent more than what you're paying me. I said, do you do you have kids? Do you have nieces? Do you have daughters? It's people like me who are paving the way for their future. Don't stand in the way of that. And people need to start thinking about that, right? Like before the the logic and the reason for women to be getting paid less is because we would take, you know, time out to, to raise our kids. Quite frankly, that's on the job training. If you ask me, even if you take a hi- hiatus and you go back and you stay at home, you're learning so many more skills than you'll ever learn on the sales floor. You're never going to learn those and you're bringing them back to what you do. Um, that should be accounted for instead of discounted. And at the same time, you know, now we have this amazing thing called paternity leave for dad. So they're taking the same sort of leave, probably for a pretty similar amount of time. So why are we looking at women and, and the way that we treat and speak to them and pay them any differently than we are a man? Yeah, and I, I appreciate you bringing this to the forefront, especially uh, in this discussion. Our audience, as you know, folks entering into the workforce, and they need to hear this, and they need to start, you know, calling it out where they see it, and making sure, especially uh, if they're experiencing it firsthand, to hit it head on. I think you've given a good framework to kind of just hit that, and really, it comes from a place of showing empathy, right? Showing that, hey, if I were a man in this situation, it would be different, and just you know, making sure that's that's top of mind, especially when you are faced with something like that. Yeah. And it's also, honestly, Danny, it comes down to self-worth as well, right? So it's okay to have those conversations. It's okay to say, I should be getting paid more or I want more. Oftentimes, you know, when there are young, whether it's women or young people entering into the sales force, we do discount ourselves. It's our first job, right? It's the first thing that we're doing. And we don't really count on the value that you bring, right? Instead of being eager to get that job, you know what? If if you think you excel at something and you deserve more, it's okay to speak up because quite frankly, you might be opening the interviewer's eyes to that as well to say, this person does value themselves. They must bring more to the table. Um, And I think it's okay to do that. 
Yeah, I really love that. Something early in my career, I had no idea how to do, frankly. I, Not that I would ever regret this decision, but I, I took an unpaid sales internship to work at Groupon back in the day. And I pretty much thought, like, I'm going to take the absolute first, like the, the best job I possibly can, regardless of what it pays me. And, you know, I, I made it work out, but, you know, I, I wish I had that mindset going into it. Uh, what's one mistake you made early in your career uh, that helped shape the way you operate today? Well, there were several because <laughs> I think we, we all make lots of mistakes. Um, but I, I would have to say, you know, what we talked about, self-worth for sure. But I, I'll tell you a, a funny story. Uh, and this kind of relates to <laughs> this kind of relates to a mistake for sure. Um, I was going for I had just finished and graduated college and I had applied to a bunch of different companies. I don't know if people have done that. And sometimes it's a, like random, like you're doing it blindly. You're just hitting apply, apply, whatever. And um, I, I was definitely doing that. I got called in for an interview. I went in for an in-person interview and the, I had two gentlemen interviewing me and they asked me, so what do you like about X and X, the name of the company? And I said, um, and I had no idea what they did because I, <laughs> I could just apply to everybody. Uh, and I started laughing and I said, actually, I have no idea what you guys do. I just know what I'm good at. Um, and they actually started laughing. I actually ended up working at this company. Um, oh, wow. But they started laughing. But the one that, that was a mistake that made me say, pay attention to detail. Don't rush through things, right? So if you are thinking about a sales career, you're going to hear this saying over and over and over again. It's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. And I, my the, that mistake that I made made me learn that, yeah, it's a numbers game if you do it right. You know, if you're doing things, I, I lucked out. I had two pretty cool people interviewing me that kind of gave me some slack, um, but it could have gone completely different, right? That con, they could have been like, okay, this person is a complete idiot. Why is she sitting in front of us, right? Like it could have gone completely differently, um, but it didn't. But it made me realize that you need to slow down in order to speed up. So yes, it's a numbers game, but the quality of the people that you're calling into or the quality of the resumes that you're sending out, the quality of the conversations that you're having are worth so much more than sending out a hundred resumes or having a hundred calls with potential prospects, right? And that's definitely what it taught me. It's like, you know what, instead of having a hundred phone calls and maybe getting one or two deals out of it, you know, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make 25 calls and perhaps I'm going to get four or five deals out of it because I've slowed down to understand who it is that I'm speaking to, and that's okay. Yeah, that's awesome. I think the the thread that probably ties both of those together, and thanks for sharing those, is you know preparation, right? How how critically important it is, whether it is an interview or a sales call, or even just understanding your customer, so you can eliminate extra noise from your sales pipeline or the leads that you don't want to call. Which some of the best salespeople do is manage their pipeline up very very efficiently. Um, it's that preparation, going the extra mile, uh, not even versus your teammates, but to to give yourself the absolute best chance at succeeding. Um, small or big uh, task or obstacle in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, think about preparation in anything in life. You don't go run your first marathon without preparing for it and, and starting off small, right? You don't go out and, and make a, a five course meal without first preparing the right, going out, getting the right ingredients, doing the group. It's the same thing in anything in life. You want to do good at it. You got to put the work in at the front end, right? And then the rest of it should be pretty successful. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Such great advice, uh, and for our audience, you know, pay attention to it. It's 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 not even sometimes that much extra work to know, you know, five things about the folks who are interviewing you or the company that you're going off, or even just doing a little bit extra digging. Uh, a lot of times, it'll be right in front of you if you just do a run run a simple Google search on news for the company you're interviewing at. You know, you'll find a, a treasure trove of uh, of things to focus on. Uh, but but yeah, great answer. Um, Question number four, who has had the greatest impact on your career? Greatest impact on my career. I know lots of people can name all these amazing CEOs and, and all these people um, that they were surrounded with. I'm going to say it was my parents. It was my mom and my dad, um, you know, very specifically my dad um, in the sense that he was always a businessman, never afraid to take a chance on himself. 
which I think people don't do enough anymore. Um, but I'd say, yeah, definitely, definitely my family, my father, my mom going out there and, and honestly setting examples of it's okay to take a risk. It's okay to believe in yourself. And you know what? It's it's okay to be your biggest cheerleader because if you're not your biggest cheerleader, nobody else is going to be either. Yeah, it's so wise. And I think you're so fortunate to have that bestowed on you. And obviously, you know, many people have uh, great parents that are that are guiding them through life. But that that advice is is so critical. And you're not taught that in school. And I'm very curious why. Uh, and it's like you go through. Uh, elementary school with a syllabus and a script that you follow. You go through junior high the same way, high school the same way, college even to some extent the same way. And not really at all along the way you're taught like you got to believe in yourself. You're the person that makes your own future because when you get out in the workforce, like no one really has your back. So it's got to be you. Um, and I think that educational piece, uh, there's need to be, there needs to be a lot of work throughout your your formal education on, you know, mindset, mentality, confidence building. And I'm, I'm not sure where it breaks down. It's, uh, but, but it's a thread that we've heard quite often that the folks that have careers like you that are just so exciting and, and profound and, and full of success, always believe in themselves and always get either told or just find it in themselves to, to have their own back first. Yeah, no. And, you know, it's it's funny, right, Danny, because the way I think about it is that if you do think of successful people, right, you guys have never met my dad. But if you think of people that you've read books about, right, whether it's a Steve Jobs or, you know, a Sheryl Sandsberg or, or anybody, whoever you're reading about, these are people who took they took a chance on themselves for 100 percent. They didn't care. I mean, you can read all the biographies in the world about anybody a biography has been written about they were they didn't have cheerleaders they were the the person who stuck out in a crowd they were the ones who said something when everybody else was silent um but they're also the most successful people and i think you know you you hit a really good point when you said having that confidence you know uh, being able to go out there and do things wh when does that disappear you know we all grow up you know, most kids are pretty confident until at least middle school, right? We don't really second guess what we're saying or who we're friends with or anything. And then, you know, we start becoming really self-aware. And sometimes in society, unfortunately, we start labeling people as, you know, the smart ones, the tall ones, the athletic ones, the da -da 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 ones. And, you know, I had actually written a paper a long time ago and then a, a talk on, you know, and this may be controversial, but I'm going to say it anyway, right? About personality types, type A, type B, type C, the different colors, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I don't believe that, right? I kind of feel like if you're told enough that you're a certain way, you're going to, you're going to develop into being that way. And I figure, you know, if we don't let people label us and we don't care how people are looking at us, but you care more about what's shining through and what you can bring to the world, you're going to succeed. If somebody says something negative to you or labels you, every part of, of your journey, whatever life career journey, it's a speed bump. For some people, they can overcome it. For other people, that's it. Game over. Don't, yep. don't, don't be one of those people where the game's over, right? Yep. Overcome it. Have the big belief in yourself. Yeah, that's it's so important. Uh, it's so important, and and I think you put it as better than I could ever put it. So you just you just gotta believe, right? You just gotta believe, even if you see those speed bumps, you gotta go, you gotta plow through it, just run right over it. Um, but yeah, thanks. That's 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 such great advice. Our last question: We've asked our guests on both seasons. This one, uh, we'll get you out of here on on this. If you could go back in time, now that you have the benefit of hindsight. What advice would you give yourself as you were entering into your career and why? I'd say keep everything exactly the same because I wouldn't be where I was if it wasn't for the mistakes that I made and everything that I learned along the way. Um, you know what? Life wouldn't be exciting if everything was perfect. We wouldn't be successful and be able to reach the next level of anything if we didn't have situations that we needed to learn from nobody is perfect. So in hindsight, I'd say do it all the same, you know, this time maybe take better notes. Um, but other, other than that, you know, um, everything that happens in life happens for a reason. Own it, 
do something about it, um, learn from it and grow from it. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I, I have to admit in our now over 40, 50 episodes, that is the first time somebody has answered that question, do it all the same. So I really appreciate that. And I think it's very aware and comes with uh, so many learnings by itself that, you know, live life with no regrets. It's all going to work out. Um, that's, that, that's really cool. Really cool. Thanks for that. Um, last up, you know, I know you're working on some cool stuff now, obviously at big Panda, where can folks find you? Um, you know, what are you up to today? Yeah. So you can definitely find me on LinkedIn. Um, Ramat Corral, you can find me do a quick search. I think I'm the only VP of global sales enablement at Big Panda. So that's an easy one. Um, you can also find me on Instagram. It's ramat.corral1. I'm on Instagram. I'm writing lots of blogs and articles. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about career, um, you want to have another conversation, want to learn more about you know, paths that you can take down the sales route, hit me up. Awesome, Ramat. I appreciate you being on the show. Uh, you dropped so much knowledge on us. Um, thank you for spending your time with us. And we really appreciate how honest uh, and uh, and thoughtful you were with your answers. And I know everybody's going to love this episode. So thank you so much. We hope to have you back on the How I Sell podcast at some time in the future. Yeah, you got it. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you.